Before we start today's show, I just wanted to give a hearty congratulations to every Foot Clan title owner out there. You did it. You made it through the season. You got that title. And if you didn't, look, I'm going to tell you the secret how those Foot Clan title winners got their title. And it was all about, nope, not just listening to the show. We don't have all the answers. It's about the community that we've built. And we want to invite you to join the Foot Clan. Head over to jointhefoot.com. Take part in a year-round fantasy football community. We talk from January through December about everything you need to know to win your league. And not just that, to make good strategy, strategy decisions, to be a great commissioner, to have a great league with good people and good rule sets. And so we invite you, check out jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from the fantasyjocks.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. I want Dak Prescott. (laughs) <laughs> As a Cardinals fan, is that what you mean? Yeah, it's just a, I mean, you talk about holiday gifts. There's nothing better than a franchise quarterback under your tree. In yeah, the fourth round. Yeah, at a, at a good price. You've got that Russell Wilson situation going on now in Dallas. Do you think Tony Romo sees the field at all this year? No, no. Do you think they take no. a chance or is it just? Uh, there's no way that they're going to give him Romo, a snap unless there's an injury. So it'll be Mark Sanchez for the final game? I think it'll be Dak. Yeah, I think no, be, I don't think it'll be Dak. I think it'll be. I Dak. mean, Dak for a quarter. For a quarter. I'm not saying he's gonna miss the whole game, but Dak's not playing that full game. There's no chance. Maybe they Dak didn't. plays the whole game. Oh my god! Let's do it for We're, lunch. No, 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 not for lunch. That one's not a fantasy. That. Hey, water bet. Zero point zero percent chance. We've already got a sweep rule in effect. So if we get another bet going. Yeah, you told me that Zeke was gonna have 25 carries yesterday. How many did he have? Well, he was too efficient. Oh, he yeah, broke 12. 55 he yard. 12. He broke 55 yard runs. Is that what you touchdowns. said? He'd only have 25 if he wasn't efficient, or were you just wrong? <laughs> I was saying that they were going to give him the ball and play him, and he was going to have a great fantasy day, and he did. No, did, did. Not, whatever, whatever. All right, welcome to the show. We have week 16 in the books. We've got some week 17 titles on the line. We're still here. We've got the waiver wire on today's show. We have full stream ahead once again. Man, the quarterback streaming options are slim. They're all owned now. I think that's part of the holiday celebration. You buy yourself a quarterback. You got to fill those bench for the tiebreaker. No, man. you're right. You're right. The ownership percentages are up. We're going to talk about that. We'll talk about Monday Night Football game as well. What a game. Apparently, Carson Palmer turned 37 today, and Jamal Charles turned 30. Uh-oh. Well, all right. <laughs> Happy birthday, fellas. Goodbye, Jamal. Percentage chance that Jamal Charles is in Kansas City next season. Oh. I'm going with. I'll go five uh, percent. Really? I was going to go around twenty. I'll go a full fifty. Uh, percentage chance He's that, Doug, that Doug Martin is a Tampa Bay Buccaneer next year. Ooh. I will go. I think they owe him a lot of I'm money. Gonna look at I'm going to go five percent. I'm going to look at his contract. Yeah, I think it depends on the contract. They're both. They're leave. not going to take dead money for him. But fifteen they are million not. was guaranteed. It's a thirty-five million dollar contract. Yeah, he's. They on will there. take hundred percent. So seven. It looks like it would be a seven million dollar dead cap. Yeah. next year i think they'll take the dead the, cap yeah he'll be i think he'll be out the door let's see what they do in the draft yeah yeah Yo, you so you'll think they'll they'll just take the seven million hit. i think he's gone i don't think they will i think he's gone um this is all based on news that he's going to be inactive again next week so Shh, goodness man not a good situation for doug martin one has to wonder if he was healthy one also has to wonder if it's that you know you get paid and yeah. then one uh, has to wonder if he's had two good years in his entire career yeah, that's not – I mean, that's pretty good for a running back. Uh, okay, well, not not a uh, – what, what did he sign, a $35 million running back? 1,400-plus <clears throat> yards last year. He's a good He's a good running back when he wants to play, it seems like. <laughs> last <laughs> night, guys, I told you it would be an almost upset. <laughs> I turned the game off in the second quarter. Did something Just happen? Did something happen? outside. <laughs> I, was, I took the opportunity to gloat at 21-14 – about both Ezekiel Elliott's carries and the almost upset of the week, obviously coming into fruition under the the guide of Zach Zinner. You didn't you didn't jump on board when it was zero zero and say this thing is. I no, I waited. This thing's I close. Uh, you got you were very happy if you had Eric Ebron. He he had eight catches. You were happy if you had Des Bryant. Des Bryant, welcome to the show. Great catch, one handed catch. 
Then Great he just catches. decided to throw a touchdown pass to Jason Witten. That had to have been annoying if you lost to Jason Witten in your fancy title. <laughs> there, I saw a meme of Tony Romo with his headset on on the bench and says he looks all dejected. And the meme basically said, "When Des Bryant gets to throw passes before you do," <laughs> it was kind of sad. So oh, um, Dallas took care of business. Does this make the Detroit game next week for the division? Yes, is that correct? It makes it for the division, and I also believe they have to if. Uh, if they don't win the division and Washington wins, they're out. Detroit is out. Yeah. Yep. So you have, uh, well, that's good for, good for Green Bay Packer player owners. Good yeah, for man. Lion player owners. You've got things on the line there. Wanted to share a few close wins and bad beats from week 16. The Foot Clan titles. We'll start here. I mean, Ian Burgess just tweeted us. He lost to his wife. In two title games. Oh, that's hey, it's a good uh, congratulations, family. Mrs. Burgess, on the double. I mean, wow. at that point, what do you do? You're done. Go back to your room. Lock yeah, the door. You're not. You're not feeling very happy. No, um, not gonna live that one down forever. <laughs> no, no. We had one sent in from uh, Blas Mijos. Mijos. I don't know what his name is. It's get, first try. A tough name. All right. He said, I won in a league by point three. The guy I played had Ravens D left and he, and he was only up by point three and the Ravens D got zero. <sighs> what? Hashtag foot clan title, man. You did have uh this is one bad beat from John. He said he needed one more passing yard from drew Brees for a three point stat, no. stat bonus. And he lost by 2.9. Oh, ouch. It, it is crazy <laughs> how you can have these just infinite combination of players. Yeah. And infinite possibilities of things that happen on the field. And so many of these championship games come down to one yard. Well, here here's a perfect example. This one, he, this guy, uh, Rick G, at Rick Gutterson, nailed it, said, uh, thought he lost the title when the Dez touchdown pass went to Witten. Until Prater missed a field goal and put him back up by point three. He won. Hashtag Foot Clan title. Uh, ben Cappers won by 1.02 points on Zeke's last touchdown, and then he sat the rest of the game. So he didn't see the field again. That uh -huh. had been tough for people that were coming back with Zeke, and then yeah. Zeke was, was benched. They didn't hey, need him. Zeke did everything he needed to do for your fantasy team. I always, but you, you saw that with Forte a couple weeks ago where Forte had like nine early points. He never touched the ball again the rest of the game. You're just waiting, right? Somebody's right. waiting for Zeke. Give him one more touch. Uh, another Dez completed the monster comeback for Kevin Payne. He won by one. Hoping for no stat corrections. Yes. Yeah. Man, if you, if you lost by less than a point, just wait. Just wait till Thursday. Make sure maybe, maybe you won. Maybe the stat corrections will come, and if you won by less than a point, if you know, <laughs> you hold might, on to your butts. You might pump the gloat for a couple of days because no, that's gonna feel. No, you, you wouldn't. No, you win Mike, by zero point three. No, Mike's of course, all Mike in. Would. He's already probably sent eight to ten giffies while we've been on the show. But yeah. the the hundreds of tweets of just <laughs> saying people won their hashtag Foot Clan titles. It is such a pleasure to watch, to to read those. Congratulations to everyone out there that did get it done. We, you know, and and everyone that that wasn't able to. There, there's always next year. Stick around, but it's just so great seeing so many. We know how good it feels. Titles. Yeah, absolutely. News and notes from around the league. You're just giving yourself the best chance to withstand victories. That's what you do here. You got to do it. You withstand. give yourself the best odds. TJ Yeldon's not going to help you if you're in week 17 or um, at all. TJ Yeldon on injured reserve. K Kenneth Farrow on injured reserve. Obviously, one week left. A lot of teams are doing this. I think Tyler Eifert went on injured reserve as well. well if, you're, if you're not going to play it's yeah, to the IR, let's, IR, let's give the spot to someone who's going to play. Rob Kelly. Sorny, day-to-day. Mm -hmm. Wait and see next week. I guess Chris Thompson would be the natural slide-in option now that he's been he's been performing well enough. Um, yeah. Tampa Bay reports Doug Martin will be inactive for week 17. This is, I mean, can you guys think of a, another situation where this has happened? Yeah, Matt Jones is his name. No, well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Matt, Matt Jones is a, like a fourth-round draft pick who is sure. expected to be the starter. Doug Martin 
was the bell of the ball if this Doug Mar- If Doug Martin had been healthy all year long, then it would be more of a story to me. But him being hurt for, you know, he missed a bunch of time with the hamstring injury. Doesn't look like he's the same. I mean, he, his yards per carry went from 4.9 to 2.9 this year. Well, so it, just like you said last year about C.J. Anderson not looking right uh, after an injury, you have to wonder if Doug Martin didn't look right because he's a better running back than that. His, his, you don't uh, lead the league in rushing yardage and uh, as a bad running back. You don't do it. Uh, well, his, his first game when he actually was healthy was also very poor. Oh, okay. So his first game was poor. Well, there you have cool. it. Cool, cool, Mike. Good, good convincing. <laughs> well, okay. One bad game. Right. Okay, how about uh, more bad years than good? More bad years than good. Did That's he lead true. the league in That's rushing true. last year? Yeah. Okay. Has he been terrible he, more he than he's last been year? Good? <laughs> I'm telling you, as a career, he has been bad more than he's been good. Okay. We'll agree to disagree. Pete Carroll said that he's unsure about Thomas Rawls' shoulder availability for Week 17. Oh, not his shoulder. His shoulder will be available. <laughs> Uh, for use, but Thomas Rawls himself may he not He dropped be. it off at the park. <laughs> Forgot to pick it up. Spencer Ware uh, is undergoing an MRI. Did we get results back on that MRI, guys? Have you been in touch with the doctors? Everything that the doctors told directly to me was that he's just sore. Okay. The, the Hippocratic Oath is, is nonsense to us. No, not fa- it doesn't apply to fantasy football fans. I think Tyreek Hill nearly matched him in carries last week. I mean, it was – well, that's not true. But he had like six or seven six carries. Six carries, It yeah. changes the, the script for that team, and it's not like they're going to stop doing that. So, all right, Paxton Lynch may be the starting quarterback for week 17. You might as well. Yeah, yeah give I, him a I think shot. he will be. You're going to see those two guys compete for the starting job next year. That's basically what's going to happen in Denver. So, uh, Tom Savage will still be the quarterback. You know, I don't blame him. They've won both games with him behind center. In a TJ Yates kind of way. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, okay. I mean, you uh, you win and you stay with him. There you go. Bryce Petty. Bad news for Robbie Anderson owners. Yes, injured Ro- reserve. Robbie Anderson is also on injured reserve by this news. <laughs> He's just. They uh, might as well just. This not is even a funny play. week. Oh. This is a funny week. Dante Moncrief. Uh, his uh, shoulder may not be available either. MRI on it. Um, he catches touchdowns and he gets hurt. That's his routine. Yeah, it seems to be. Djax is day to day with a jaw injury. Was that too much trash talk? Is that what that? <laughs> no, I, 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 I. no, he got blown up in the game. I mean, uh, he was knocked out for a while with the jaw. He managed to come back in. Such a tough guy. Um, week seventeen, will they play? Chuck Pagano said that uh, he will not rest any of their starters in the meaningless week seventeen game against the Jags. So they'll all be out on the field. It's good to hear. Lev Bell, Big Ben. They're going to rest. Yeah. They're going to rest in week 17. Me. This is why you don't play. If you if you made it to your championship game with Lev Bell, Which I mean, it's many- kind of – I'm not doing anybody any favors because if you're in a week 17 yeah. title game, I'm just harping on the fact that I don't like your league format, and that doesn't help you. So, But, but change your league format. <laughs> but Lev Bell's not going to play. So there you go. You're going to have to grab a backup. That's the expectation, at least right now. And and who I wonder if is D Will gonna be active? I don't I don't think We're so. We're gonna get that Fitzgerald Toussaint action. I, I believe that's gonna be your play here is is Fitzgerald Toussaint. If 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 he is the starter, he's a great pick. You better pick him up. Adam Gase hinted that he was unlikely to rest starters against the Patriots. No, I I can't imagine that they would. I feel like that game actually has meaning for both teams as far as placement. You know. The, for the Patriots, they get the number one seed if they win. For the Dolphins, there's a chance that they could move up to the five seed and play against the Texans. So I, I think that is actually an important game. I don't I don't think any starter will be rested yeah. unless it's a blowout. And it's I mean it's Matt Moore in his third start. Is that correct? Yeah. So I mean you got to get him reps and yeah, you got to get him true. reps with his players. Yeah, there's nobody on that team that just class like qualifies for that auto sit either. Right. You know, JHI or. You know, Devontae well, Parker's not going to sit. Ajayi might sit because of the, the injury. Yeah, yeah I, that's I'm true. curious about that one. All right, the Giants have it clinched. There's thoughts that they may rest some of their starters in Week 17. We'll keep you updated. But they're locked into the number five seed no matter what happens on Sunday. So that's one of those positions oh, where... Man, that's Merry Christmas to a Washington. Who needs to win to get in? And the Giants might be resting people. All right, Bill O'Brien. That might change my stream of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Bill O'Brien said that the uh, the team will play to win in Week 17. Was noncommittal about Lamar Miller. I can't imagine p- 
playing week 17 Lamar Miller because uh, if you're Bill O'Brien or a fantasy owner. Right. If you're Bill O'Brien, that's foolish. You're 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 going to the playoffs. Give this guy another week of rest. You know that come week one in the playoffs, he's going to get the ball over and over and over if he's out there and healthy. So this I, doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I definitely think Alfred Blue needs to be picked up. Alfred Blue could have 40 carries yeah. in week 17. That's not even a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> no, wasn't, Jerry wasn't, Jones. That wasn't funny, so <laughs> we all knew it. Calm down. Jerry Jones said playing Tony Romo in week 17 is not worth the risk. He probably meant that about five different ways. Right. I was just going to say it's not worth the risk of him playing well. That's the that's the risk Man, they're trying people, to avoid. People love storylines, don't they? Uh, just, yes. Do. Stories are life. Yeah, it's just funny because, I mean, it's – okay, so he let's say he comes in and he th- throws some – Good passes in week 17 in a meaningless game. Uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it blows the team. But all the, all the beat reporters are going to go and ask him, well, after this performance, are yes, you going to – Yes, they will. It's just stupid. They, But they will. Yeah. And that's they, why that's why Dak plays the whole game. They think that's good reporting. You guys want to talk about some week 17 waivers? Let's do it. Put me in, coach. The solid just do it or let's do it. Is that what you said? <laughs> let's do it. All right. Week 17 waiver wire pickups because because we should. Uh, Adam Thielen. You're because, darn right. Because, of course, he's only 25 percent owned. He, ah, hooked on a Thielen. Jason Sorry. solo performance. Yeah. Adam Thielen. Uh, twelve for two. My two kids. And two. My kids got a karaoke machine. Sorry, for brief, brief aside. <laughs> they got a karaoke machine, and they were spending the night at their grandparents. So last night, I hooked it up for them, and you know that my wife and I had to test that machine of out. Of course. And I found out I'm a really bad singer because I could hear myself. Wait, you did? <laughs> yes, I found that out. Yeah, sorry. I thought can, like, can my kids spend the night at your grandparents? Sure, I'm sure they could. <laughs> my my kids' grandparents are karaoke awesome. party. That sounds really cool. Uh, Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, well, Will Fuller. So Adam Thielen gets to take on Chicago. Everyone in this list are guys who you're picking them up because you're thinking about playing them this week. Just want to reiterate that fact. So I guess the question is, do, do any of these players deserve keeper waiver um, signings for the sake of holding them over? Like. <sighs> Keeper? I mean, no, I don't think so. The, I mean, the, dynasty wise, hopefully, you know, yeah, well, that's that's a completely different beast. Yeah. yeah, dynasty. Probably all these guys are already owned. The only like even potential would be maybe a Terrell Pryor, but who is because maybe he's he very leaves. owned, right? You, it's, sure. So I mean, it, uh, you're probably not getting a, a pickup here unless it's a Keenan Allen or someone like that worth mentioning again before the year is over, right? But Adam Thielen gets to take on Chicago. They've been getting torched lately. Marquise Lee in a they're, – they're not going to rest their starters in the Colts, but that's okay because they're not playing any starters in the secondary anymore these days. Marquise Lee could have a, a great game. And I think that, that's, uh, that Fuller is interesting against the Titans. The Titans' secondary has just been atrocious. You watched uh, possibly the worst quarterback in the league, Blake Bortles, look – like a top caliber elite quarterback big against Tennessee. So he's and, he's at least interesting. And Tennessee is not going to get up for this game. After Tennessee's hopes and dreams are crushed and Mariota, Mariota is out, yeah. this is not going to be a game where you see Tennessee come and just show show their muster, you know? They're going to get down for this game. Hey, Let's before we get, get <laughs> you got to get up to get down, man. That's what I've heard. I've never <laughs> never done it yet. How was your white Christmas season? <laughs> oh, the dance moves are great. Before we move on to the running backs, I nope. want to thank today's sponsor, Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high-quality ingredients taste better. They are better for you. It's important to know where your food comes from. Planning dinner. 2017, man. It's the year of it's health. It's the year of fitness for the footballers. Look, cooking, planning dinner is just its not fun. It's not fun. You've had the long day of work or you have a long day watching the kids. It just the day is big, right? There's a lot of things going on. You don't want to have to think about, well, what am I going to make for dinner? Blue Apron makes that easier for you. They send you pre-portioned dinner ideas and they're always delicious, easy to cook for less than $10 a meal. Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes 
with the pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. And they know that when you cook, it brings your family together. And this is, we can all speak to this personally, that cooking with the family, always a good time. Bring the bond together. Here's some of the things available this month. Roasted pork and braised cabbage with barley and glazed apples. Thai green coconut curry with sweet potato and jasmine rice. Brown butter, chestnut gnocchi with Brussels sprouts and pea shoot salad. Check out this week's menu to get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash ballers. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash ballers. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Also, it's pristine auction time of year right now. This is, you just won your championship. You got to go commemorate that with a signed jersey, a signed helmet, uh, a signed canvas. I mean, Pristine Auction is an amazing place. I took a look this morning at some of the top performers this week to see, do they have things available on Pristine Auction? Aaron Rodgers did. uh, Russell Wilson did. David Johnson did. Jordy Nelson did. All these guys, man. You you love your Le'Veon Bells, your Jay Ajayi. Some Des Bryant say thank you for last night. It's it's amazing to just check it out and and sometimes I mean I found this sweet like I loved this black matte helmet from David Johnson. Want to get it? Uh, there are just such a wide variety of amazing things there that are true show pieces. They aren't what you usually find when you go into someone's house or when you go into their you know their cool little video game room. Deck your place out with this amazing stuff, and you won't believe how cheap some of this stuff is. I saw a signed jersey of one of the top performing players this week for 45 bucks. So, I mean, the range is incredible. you got to go check them out. It's pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com, and make sure you, when you sign up, you let them know that you found them through the footballers. Uh, this morning I, I awoke to an email from a listener that said his wife – forbid him from uh buying a foot clan title t-shirt because it was too it was too uh in your face it was too brag bragger braggadocious braggadocious what so he asked me what to ask he asked me to add a a a coffee cup so he could remember his title uh every morning so i did what good is winning if you can't (laughs) let people know that you've won you are of, of all the things that you are passionate about mike um, rubbing it in is maybe a top of your list. Yeah, that's got to be top three you, for him. You got to win big. Rubbing it in, um, appearing homeless. Those are the only two. <laughs> hey, hey I, I'm, I've cleaned up today. I did see. I that. have a 2017 fresh cut. Uh, yeah. The, the people when they go down to the uh, the slot machines and 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 they win the big jackpot, they put them all over billboards because winning is the best. Yeah, you don't play slots against eleven other people. Yeah, but you won. <laughs> do when you win at slots, do you run down the row of slots and <laughs> I be like, won, I, "I want it mine, I want it mine, I want it mine." Yeah, eat it, <laughs> eat it. <laughs> All right, um, running back. Uh, th- these names are great. The running back waiver wire. Running this back week. is is at least very interesting this week. Look, if you need a start, Jaquiz Rogers. Jaquiz Rogers against New Orleans. Alex Collins should be starting against San Francisco for Seattle and getting the rock a ton if Rawls misses that game. You have the situation now with the MCL tear for Carlos Hyde Ooh. with Sean Drone and Dewan Harris. Is it big salad time? Yeah, I think Mike and I – so, Mike, you did a, a bunch of research yesterday, looked into this. I am of the belief that it will be Dewan Harris as the one taking over because that's what we saw when Carlos Hyde went down last time. But you've seen some different Dr- – Well, Drone was beat up when that happened, and we saw last week once Hyde went down – Drawn was the guy who got the carries, and so just he's healthy, he's great. Yeah, do you expect a big rushing game from Sean Drone? No, you are, you got ten for seventeen, but he's the big salad. He's the fantasy vegetable for a reason, because six for forty eight through the air. That's what he does. He gets you yardage, and he's. He, I think he's a fine play. I think because took of a whole the, year before we ate a salad. <laughs> Sounds like this year. I, I think because of the uh, murkiness there of is it Dewan Harris, is it Sean Drone, is it a split plus the matchup against Seattle? I am it's avoiding. Tough. I'm. I'm going to avoid the matchup against Seattle. Does favor Sean Drone and the passing attack, the little dump off passes. I. I believe, but I mean, with guys like Jaquiz Rogers out there. 
and he's, you know, very, his ownership is very small. 17% owned in ESPN, 18% in Yahoo. And, and most likely those guys that own him were already the, the Doug Martin owners. If you have, I can't imagine non Doug Martin owners have been holding on to quiz, but to me, he's the best play. He's playing against New Orleans. He's the starter. Yeah. You didn't see Charles he's Sims been, do he's anything been last week. He's been efficient as a running back all yeah. season long. He's Devonta Freeman light, and he's got a great matchup. Yeah. I, I, I would He's agree. my number one pick. I mean, who who would you would uh, you guys next rather have year Alfred in Blue? your fantasy draft? Number <laughs> one, Jaquiz Rogers. You heard it here first. Yeah. I, I mean, there's great guys out this week. No, Alfred, Alfred Blue. Blue. Chris I, I would probably play Alfred Blue. Alfred Blue. Um, uh, no, I take Rogers then Blue. Yeah, I might. Uh, Alex Collins is very interesting against San Francisco. It's not interesting enough for me, man, because they're Francisco's going to give carries elsewhere as well. It won't where? just be Collins. Yeah, who? The uh, their backup. His I, name escapes me. <laughs> I, I I understand that there's other guys who will get carries, but Alex Collins, I think, will get the most touches of the group. And it's I agree. San Francisco. But I, you may see, like I said, 35 touches for Blue. Chris Ivory as well. I mean, there are a lot of really great I matchups I don't know, I can't remember for people his, off his of name. the waivers. Chris Ivory. Pope. That's what I was thinking about. Okay. Try main Pope. Um, Chris Ivory goes up against Indianapolis. They do not have a great run defense. Last week, Chris Ivory looked pretty good. He, yes, he fumbled the ball, but he had, you know, 14 carries, got a touchdown, 69 yards through the air. He had a very good game. And now with TJ Yeldon going on injured reserve, Chris Ivory should get the work there. And I, I think he's a fine play. I mean, when's the last time, including last season, I don't remember a week where you could honestly say there are five starting running yeah. backs on waivers. And and granted, this is week, probably a week, week 17. 17. Probably going to see Damian Williams get a lot of touches as well. Kenyon Drake. My boy! Kenyon, Kenyon Drake, Drake will work in there. Uh, Ronnie Hillman, now that Kenneth Farrow's uh, gone. I don't know why you'd bring Melvin Gordon back for a game. It doesn't make sense. No, Oh, no, I would bring Melvin Gordon back for a game. Oh, for three yards? Yeah. I mean, if I'm Melvin Gordon and I ran and I was one of the best, you know, running backs in the league this year, to, you know, one of the top – Five or ten, and I had nine hundred and ninety-seven yards. And my Mike McCoy come in and lose five yards on your first carry, <laughs> and then you're, like, you're like, "Dang it!" Now I gotta get more. Mike McCoy could be playing for his job as well. Yeah, playing injured guys doesn't help you though. But <laughs> no, if, if but playing Ronnie Hillman doesn't help anybody. Other guys to consider: Charles Sims, Charles West, Darren McFadden. You know, I think McFadden sees a ton of work in Week Seventeen. Yeah. Very possible. What about ZZ Top here? Zach Zinner. Ah, uh, you know. Two Zs in his name for two touchdowns. He certainly looked better than Dwayne Washington ever has. Yeah. But it, the game faded away from them. I, You know, I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. I'd like some of those other options first, but Zach Zinner's got to be on your list. He's only 1% owned. Yeah, and we talked about Chris Thompson. And Rex Burkhead should be mentioned as well. I mean, you had Jeremy Hill. I feel like this is the movie with Keanu Reeves. The replacements <laughs> like this week, the names that we're reading off for you to play. Well, let's go with Collins and Harris and Perkins and Drake and Hingleman Kringleberry. Yeah. And what and, was his name? And honestly, in that just, movie, what Keanu? Yeah. I don't know. I can search it, but oh, the replacements I, is a very replaceable movie. We were talking about. Oh, come on. What? No, it was terrible. <laughs> that was a timeless classic. <laughs> Remember how his girlfriend drove super fast in the Jeep for no reason? That was amazing. No, actually, I, the only thing I remember is that they would they danced in the prison cell, and Keanu had his face covered the whole time in shame because the movie was a Gene Hackman. Oh, Gene Hackman! Every I time love. I bring up Gene Hackman, <laughs> rest in peace. Wait, he's still alive? No. Yes, he's still <laughs> is he, alive. Is he really? Yes, but I was gonna say every time I bring up G Gene Hackman, I always tell people how old he is because he's crazy old, but he's not dead. No way. He's if I dead. type is Gene, he's a the retired. Google autofills <laughs> Hackman dead. No, because he's That's 86 true. years old. Wow. He's still amazing. But he's not dead. Well, g congratulations, Gene. Yeah. I the mean, R.I.L., you know? <laughs> Rest in life, oh my, my man. Oh, he's, my goodness. He is the OG Lex Luthor. Oh, <laughs> certainly. He's the OG he Lex is. Luthor. But, so, one more running back. Look, <laughs> He was big in the 1880s, too. <laughs> he was solid. Here's, I'm still going to figure out 
the name of Keanu Reeves. He had an incredible <laughs> quarterback name in that movie. Oh, Shane Falco. Oh yeah, <laughs> Shane Falco, well, the he, replacement quarterback. And then he he always has great. He bombed names. in the Sugar Bowl, right? Some <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Johnny Utah. Anyways, we're getting off track here. <laughs> really? Look, um, look, we had all these all these great names, right? Jaquiz Rogers should be Shane should Falco. be great. All, Shane Falco is going to be amazing this He's week. He's my stream of the week. Pick him up. I don't have enough options. But between D'Angelo Williams, if D'Angelo Williams is is rested, if he's if he's inactive for this game, Fitzgerald Toussaint against Cleveland is <laughs> is a great play. Yeah, uh, he may be the Kenneth Farrell versus Cleveland, but sure. No, no, Fitzgerald Toussaint will get it done. <laughs> he will. He will. Yeah. He to absolutely. the tune of uh, what? To he, the tune of he's, twelve he's, to fifteen fantasy points. He has started a couple games for them, and he was just fine. Their, right. their system is great. If you need a streaming tight end this week, Brandon Myers had six targets with Cameron Braid out. He's owned in zero percent of leagues for Tampa. Charles Clay, you know he's been on fire lately. Seventeen percent owned. He's your number one target. And then Dennis Pitta. You know, eight for seventy-five last week takes on Cincinnati, who's been struggling against tight ends. Yeah, two red zone yeah. opportunities. You know, this could be missed. the this could be the last game for Steve Smith. Hmm, I didn't think about that. They said week seventeen is really important to him. I watched a documentary on him. I think it was like a what's that NFL the, the NFL Network documentary one. Oh, I don't remember what it's called, but I, I saw like a twenty-minute part of him leaving football, Carolina. Football life. life. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And and. It, it was his return last year when he came back to Carolina to play and he wanted to destroy them. He, he wanted to punch everyone in the and face. And he did destroy them. Like he, he went out there and just – he's like very close to number six, I think, on the all-time reception list. Something oh, like he's that. going ham this week. Who, who's He's just been so good. Cincinnati? Like they'd welcome him back next year, but I don't know if he will be. He's yeah. got like a son that's in college. <laughs> yeah. Like got a scholarship to college. It was crazy. All right. Let's talk about defensive streams in week 17. You have the Steelers taking on the Browns. Always a delight. The Texans take on the Titans and uh, Matt Castle. That might be my number one defense for week 17, other than the fact that they could potentially rest players or not be interested in. I mean, they're locked in, right? The Texans are yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah, they won the division. Um, they can move. They can move. The Bucks take on the Panthers. So. Yeah. That's yeah, right. I'm not sure. I I'm not excited really about want that. either of those defenses. Oh, I mean, yeah, possibly. The, the uh, I'm not looking at the numbers, so I'll pull them up. But the Panthers' defense, uh, or when you're playing defenses against the Panthers, it's been very positive for your points. It it doesn't seem like it should be. Yeah, no, it it, it has. You're right. But so and I think that, that the Bucks are solid. I feel like the last... Bucks, and the Bucks are fighting still. They have a chance to get in. Do they have a chance to get in the playoffs? I don't or am think I mistaken? So. I don't. Do they? No, I don't think they Is do. There, are they no, out now? No, the Bucks. Uh, I think oh. they're eliminated. Okay. Well, no. In just dis disregard say, that. I want to say you're right. I think it takes like if the Lions lose like and Washington other, loses. Yeah, two other losses and them winning. All right, the Dallas win did preserve their playoff hopes. Here's how they get in. So they need all of these things to happen in Week 17. You ready? <laughs> okay. They need to win, obviously, against Carolina. Step one. They need the Colts to beat Jacksonville. Okay, realistic. They need the Cow Wait, what? Yes, yes. They Why need... does that factor into anything? It's going to be strength of schedule based oh, okay. or something like that. Yep, that All is right. what it is. The Cowboys need to beat Philly. The Titans need to beat Houston. The 49ers need to beat Seattle. <laughs> the... the 49ers need to Listen, beat Seattle. Listen, we're still going. <laughs> the 49ers need to beat Seattle. <laughs> the next one's even better. The Lions need to be Green Bay, and the Giants and Redskins must have to tie. Must tie. Oh, so you're telling um, me there's a chance? If never, that never happens, tell me the odds. If that happens, the Buccaneers, Packers, and Redskins. Um, that means the Redskins will have two ties, and two ties are the equivalent of one win. By the way, in the oh, standings, I love it when it's like, oh, another team needs to tie. I mean, <laughs> wow, it you have had a few this year, but. Uh, so you're saying there's a chance, yeah. and Doug Martin's not a part of it. All right. The, <laughs> that, by the way, last week with Cleveland beating San Diego, that's one of those uh, – that affirmed my desire to play a better actual defense versus the matchup. That's the Bucks panthers to me. Like, I never – I've seen Cam Newton throw five touchdown passes. 
I have Fair. never seen Matt Castle do that in a long, 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 long time. What about Oakland's defense? They're they're not a great fantasy defense, but they're going to Denver, who might have Paxton Lynch playing. Yeah, it's not terrible. Got got those uh, those extra picks. Hey, speaking of picks, don't forget it is deep into winter, and Ryan Fitzpatrick is playing football. Oh, well, come on, revenge game. So Buffalo, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Buffalo's D. Um, Playing at the New York Jets. All right. What else do we got? For defenses, I'm out. I'm tapped out. Are we moving on to streams? Yep. Let's do it. But then I have to find the button. You take, guys talk take, for a minute. Take your time. We're all going to wait around here. Full stream ahead. You're lucky because I was about to launch into a Gene Hackman monologue. You, you can quote some Gene Hackman? No. <laughs> what? What? Enemy of the State? Oh, with, with yeah. With Will Smith? I remember really liking that movie when it came out. Ew, yeah. What? The Conversation? That, Neither of what? you know that one? No. no I don't what know is that? That, that was a, I believe that was an Oscar nominated flick by Gene Hackman in the 70s. Oh. The Conversation? It's one of the most boring movies I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. I mean, I, I watched it. Sounds great. It's a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wait, what? Yeah. Wow. The Conversation, 1974. Gene Hackman still looks as old as he is, doesn't that? Dude, Get Shorty. Get Shorty was a great movie, and he was so good in that. Crimson Don't. Tide? Oh, come on, man. You got to <laughs> Gene Hackman. Oh, by I'm the way. I'm so happy you're alive. Um, nominated for Best Picture, Best Sound, Best Screenplay. The Conversation, the was, conversation. was nominated for Best Sound, a movie about just talking it was actually yeah it was about like uh wiretapping and stuff oh oh okay well i'm in that sounds more interesting than what i was imagining that's like uh what was the one with him and will smith that was like hacking? Uh, enemy, enemy of, of the, the state. state we just yeah. talked about it there you go welcome I'm, to the conversation nailed it the conversation right. i like it when you hit that certain age as an actor where you look the same <laughs> old for like 40 years you look the exact i'm same. looking forward to that all myself. right my stream of the week uh, I am going to stick with my guy from last week, everyone's favorite quarterback. We're talking about the BB gun himself, Blake pew, 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 pew. Bortles. Look, he was great last week. He played well. He threw for over 300 yards, threw a touchdown, ran a touchdown, threw zero interceptions. Those are good things. Now he gets the opportunity of taking on the Colts while, uh, Mike, you said, they're not resting their starters. It doesn't matter because they don't have any starters in their secondary. They're the 24th best team, which is not good, against quarterbacks. You know, last week against Oakland, Derek Carr, before he went out, threw three touchdowns on him. I think Blake Bortles is going to be fine this week again. And because ownership is so low right now as people pick up quarterbacks to stash them for bench point tiebreakers, Blake Bortles is going to be one of your better options. Now I'm going with... T-Mobile, Tyrod Taylor, a guy who is a quarterback one. He is a, a, a full-on legit quarterback one owned in just over 60% of ESPN leagues. We saw him have a monster breakout game last week against Miami with a healthy Sammy Watkins. You get to take on the Jets, who uh, the Jets packed it up quite a few weeks ago. <laughs> they packed it, They went on an airplane ride to vacation. And I just I think that he Tyrod Taylor is a great option this week, especially for just grabbing him off the waivers. He had a couple lulls here and there throughout the season, but the last three weeks he's been getting it back together. Lulls. Um, <laughs> I'm going with Gene Hackman. Uh, I love it. I, I wanted Still Shane alive. Falco. But if you guys Shane. can guess the guess his earliest credit, Gene Hackman's earliest movie credit, nineteen the year, the year. Uh, what was the play that Abraham Lincoln went to? Oh, <laughs> 1961, 55 years ago, Gene Ooh. Hackman started on this wild that's, road. That's and now boss, he man. ends as a streaming quarterback option. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, look, it, it I, would be the end of him. I would say Eli Manning with 356 yards last week, taking on Washington, potential shootout, potential Washington trying to, you know, they're trying to make the playoffs. Potential rest. I mean, maybe maybe New York wants Washington I, out of the playoffs. And I'm so Eli you. stays in the game. He's not been exactly smooth so they want to keep things working 
I'm going to just throw him out there. If we start hearing that it's trending towards him being rested, there's no word on that yet. I'll, I'll go with Kaepernick. But you guys have the two streams that I actually like. I so. can't imagine that New York would say, yeah, go ahead, Washington. Beat us. Get in the playoffs. And, uh, a yeah. division rival. No, no, they're not going to say that, but they're also not going to risk the health of any of their prime players to do it. Well, let's jump into the mailbag. 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 This is a fun mailbag. We have some questions about leagues, about uh, some other things. One that we talked about earlier, but Travis in Ohio, by the way, if you have a question, go to the website, the fantasy com. Click on that questions button in the upper right hand corner. Send us your question. Try to answer a few on the show every week. I am the commissioner, says Travis in Ohio, of a 14-team friends and family league that spans three states. A few older guys, some young guys and gals, all levels of technology. What is the best way to communicate with the entire league at once? Nice. P.S. Hashtag Footclaim title for the zombie monkeys. Oh, excellent work there, the zombie monkeys. It's a dynasty league, PPR league. But what's the best way to communicate, guys? It's uh, To me, it's still the Facebook group and because you're talking a, a technology that even the older folks, they're yeah. on Facebook. Trust me, they're on Facebook. Your parents are on Facebook. Your grandparents I, I, are on Facebook. This weekend, I told my grandfather, uh, I was starting to tell him a story about a video. And he said, I know. And he had I've already seen, seen the video on <laughs> On, yeah. on Facebook. A, a private Facebook group is fantastic. You get notifications, too. That's yes. the nice thing. If you're, if you're making the group, you're saying as opposed to just a group chat, Yeah, you, you make a group page yes. for your... And, and the best part about that is that you can also use that to troll. Oh, yeah, that's the best part. Yeah, GIF support in Facebook is key. <laughs> Speaking of which... We're going we're gonna to tweet out... We got to tweet out the best... Oh, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Thank you for, for yeah. reminding me. There is a video, a, a very particular video. It's the best. This is the best video. I Whenever I beat someone, I just DM them this video. You know what? Brooks needs to take that gif, throw a hashtag Foot Clan title over it, and that needs to become well, a, a standardized. We, uh, can, we can do that, but the, then you would lose the audio, which the audio is, you, the audio no. is key. Bro Are you kidding me? Brooks will make sure the audio is well, in Then there. it would not be a gif. You're correct about that part, but he can take that video and okay. he can. Well, I'll, I'll tweet this out that this is what you send to people. And the most common response is, why did you send this to me? And you always respond, you know. Yeah. You know why you I know sent why. this I guess to that, you. that that plays to this question because uh, Gabriel wrote in. He said he's first year playing fantasy. Listen to us all year from the ultimate draft kit to championship weekend. Now that the season is over, he has one final question, guys. For this season. Okay. And it's an important one. What is the optimal amount of bragging frequency and duration when you one win the regular season? Two, have the most total points scored. Three, win the championship. He's asking for a friend. <laughs> He's asking for a friend, guys. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say optimal is when you win the championship. Right. Yeah, you gotta win the championship. You, you brag about points. Uh, you that, you're playing with fire there because the the leading point well, score. his point i think you're missing his point his point is what is the optimal amount of bragging in frequency and duration when you've done all three of those oh when you've won the regular season you've also had the most points scored and you've won the championship he has done all of them that's why he said he's asking for a friend he drafted kelsey julio alshon demarco murray mccoy picked up matt ryan new england and ajayi and dominated two the season. two gifts a day mandatory okay so that's the frequency Yes, at, at and then for what, 11 and a half months, 12 months <laughs> at least. Actually, uh, that's like, you know, right up until the other yeah, team wins. I understand. Year. I understand completely. Eventually, the the passion dies out because people stop responding to you, but they, they're seeing it. Trust me, they're seeing them. Uh, my favorite to do was when I had the trophy for our league of record is whenever there was a holiday, I would dress them up for uh, for uh, with either Photoshop or some things, you know, and it didn't matter. What day? What holiday was it? Flag Day, Fourth of July, uh, St. Patrick's Day. You know, whatever the holiday is, to make sure you take that time to let people know that you won. And right. Those are those them. are nice. Yeah, those are nice. So, I that's it for today. Good luck. Uh, All right. Good luck on the waiver wire. We'll be back on tomorrow's show. And if you need some hardware, some actual physical trophies and rings and hardware, check out Fantasy Jocks, our studio sponsor, FantasyJocks.com. Use the promo code. Footballers. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. See you tomorrow.
Yeah! Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>